Isaac Saracen is a skilled hacker formerly employed by British Telecom Sprint. With his health failing, Isaac did the only thing he could think of. He ran. He found a haven in a working class district of the city known as Little Russia. There Isaac took on a new name, Ishmael. Within hours of his arrival, he was embroiled in the affairs of a brutal member of the Mediza organized crime family known as Leo. Convinced by a longtime friend, Frankie, to flee from his commitments to the Mediza family, Isaac found himself hunted by the ruthless Leo. On a rooftop, far from witnesses, Leo murdered Frankie. Only through the use of his skills as a hacker was Isaac able to drive Leo off. Now wounded, alone, and far from help, Isaac depends on the kindness of strangers. What do you do when the only way to save those you love is through the use of proxies? ColbyJack.net is proud to present Firmware Proxy by Colby Tracks. Fourteen. The alarm on the Opempapo Knoll scattered a fever dream of rooftops under a darkened sky, with Leo pursuing me endlessly from hiding spot to hiding spot. I kept trying to fight back, but my arms were made of taffy. The Pemapo Null IRC notification alarm continued to echo through my cell as I found myself in the familiar storeroom hidden deep within the Amazov catfish farm. My sheets, drenched in sweat, encased my fists. I struggled out of the sheets. The room spun with the effort. Such a simple thing. Unwrapping sheets was a major ordeal. The alarm continued to scream at me. After an eternity, I escaped the sheets and shut down the alarm. On the screen of the Opemapo Null flashed a green cursor in a black box. The words above it were hard to decipher. The aphasia must have returned. I stared for a long time at the cursor, trying to make the character stand still. At long last, they made sense. Not on an instinctual level. More like how a story you know reads in a language you are just learning. I sounded out the words, my voice working the sounds my eyes couldn't translate. Rama here, the text said. Hearing the words, it all made sense, even as the text itself remained a mystery to me. I activated the Opemapol's text-to-speech capabilities. Doing that took me longer than I expected. The words on the menus were strange to me and I ended up having to read each word on the screen out loud until finally I found the handicapped accessibility features of the unit. As I read through the options, I found the speech-to-text tool first, and activated that as well. I returned to the green-on-black IRC window and said, Sorry for delay. Tars is here. We'll explain once authentication complete. The characters of my words appeared on the screen. I had no idea what the system actually sent. Rama must have been away from his screen, for his response took an eternity to arrive. The soft female voice of the Apempo Null speech synthesizer came to me. November 23rd, 0 D 0 A 4 9 2 0 6 I listened to the babble six, of hexadecimal one, digits. Seven, Six, Why was he six, sending me strings five, of gibberish? Three, zero, I stared six, at the screen for a long time before six, I began to piece five, together six, what I was supposed five, to do. Six, e, Not that the symbols actually meant zero, anything to me, six, but a lifetime of staring six, at strings of code on screens six, forms six, habits that are hard to break. Zero, seven, I read the message out loud, six, listening to the eight, syllables roll six, off my tongue into nine, the air. Six, e, six, Select String starting at 0D0A and ending with 652E on the screen. The Opemapo Null selected the text. Computer, string length, I said as I slowly remember the steps of our authentication system. String length is 176 characters. 
The feminine voice of the Apemapo Knoll answered. The next step was harder than I expected. My mind was unable to make the necessary connection to convert the concept into numbers. Such a simple thing, the order of the months and their numbering, but I was unable to remember the names of any of them. Though I was aware that November was one, it just didn't register properly. Giving up, I asked the Opemapo Null, Convert November 23rd to numerical dating. The numerical date, according to city standard, is 11-23. Next step. Convert date to decimal as if it were a hexadecimal base 16 number. I knew this one. At least I used to. I resorted to using the Opema pole as my external brain. I made it do all the things I was incapable of. Convert 1123 hexadecimal to decimal. Find result modulo 176. I needed to find the remainder of the result divided by 176, known as modulo in number theory. The result for 4087 modulo 176 is 163. Trim 163 characters from left of selected string. Convert result to alphanumeric. The result is unreadable. Trim first digit on left from result and convert to alphanumeric. The result is nigh one. Is that a word in Igrish? It was impossible for me to know if such a word existed. It didn't sound like one, but then again it did. No. The soft voice of the Opemapo answered. I struggled, trying to remember a process my computer could use to solve the problem for me. After several false starts, I found a result which worked. Trim result by one from left and convert to alphanumeric. Check for validity as egrish word. If not egrish, repeat operation on result. Let the Opemapo do its job. It could take me hours to trim values from the 164th character to the end of the 176th character. At this moment, I had no math skills. One plus one was a mystery to me. My brain kept alternating between one zero and two. How could I hope to solve a problem as difficult as subtracting two three-digit numbers? Especially when I kept hearing numbers like 13, 1101, and D rattle around my head. Was D a number or a letter? After four iterations, a result valid in Egrish has been achieved. The voice of the Pemapo Null came to me after an eternity of waiting. Result is one. How long did the operation take? I asked. Processor time calculations of less than one nanosecond are beyond the ability of this system to measure. As per protocol, this unit waited 3.5 seconds before issuing a response. The wait time setting is based on values established through advanced cognitive studies conducted at Agadez University. These settings are adjustable at any time through the Handicapped Vocal Assist module. Would you like to change these settings now? Three and a half seconds. Was that a long time? I shook my head. The room spun for a moment. No. Leave settings as they are. Return to IRC window and place final result in message. Send. Green symbols appeared on the black screen. How long since reception of last message? I asked as I waited for a response from Rama. Time since last message is one hour and ten minutes. Why did I ask? The words meant little to me. How many hours were there in a second? After an eternity, the Opemapo spoke again. Message has been received. Should I use a different voice for incoming message as use parameters suggest possibility of confusion between operating system communication and text communication? That would be nice. Could you use a male voice for incoming communications? 
I asked meekly. I was so scared I would upset the Opempopo Null by being too demanding. Female voice selected for operating system communications. Male voice for text has been selected. The Opempopo Null verified. A soft male voice came to me. Took you long enough, Tarsus. What happened? Forget the procedure? A realization hit me. An hour must be a long time. Sorry for wait. I'm a bit under the weather, not feeling my old self. No worries. So what's so important you need to put out a personal ad? Rama said in a soft male computer voice. Why had I called? I thought for a moment before responding. Need some data from public city records as well as information on procedures and regulations regarding underage prostitution. What the hell? If you need public data, go get it. Not like you need to hack the system, Rama responded. Why couldn't I do it myself? I was capable. Then it struck me. I just lost track of the conversation. And not only that, I had lost track of what was wrong with me. I finally admitted to what I couldn't before. I'm having problems, major health issues. My implants are going bad, destroying my ability to do anything involving reading. There was an indeterminate pause. Sounds like you need a hospital, not information. Panic grew in my chest. If I went to a hospital, they'd register me. If I were registered, BTS would know where I was. It would ruin everything. Sweat poured down my forehead as I fought to say, Can't go to hospital. Too many people after me. Who'd you hack? Rama asked. Not hacking, I answered. My mouth moved on its own, bypassing my common sense. My employer and this hard-ass mafia guy. There was another long pause. Employer? Who did you work for that can keep you from seeking medical attention? Rama didn't even ask about the mafia. It was as if that was expected. But his emphasis on employer gave me pause. I stared at the screen with its illegible characters for a long time before answering. It's been ten minutes, Rama said. Give me the name of your employer or I'm dropping the connection and blacklisting you with the Brotherhood. No, 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 I needed those connections. My life depended on it. Something was wrong. I could taste metal, and my toes were numb. I worked special projects with BTS. You're a narc? I can't believe I let you sucker me with all that talk of backtracking me through my proxies. You are so dead. Rama responded. The soft computer voice was at odds with his actual words. I fought hard, and for one fleeting moment I had clarity. Yeah, yes, I am. My implants are killing me. Blacklist me, ban me, and infect my system with the worst shit you have. But please help me. A girl's life is on the line. She'll die if you don't help me. I pleaded. I wished he could hear my voice, to know the truth. But that was impossible now. How could he trust someone who betrayed the basis of the Brotherhood? The Brotherhood was outside the system, outside the corporate structure, to discover that not only were there corporate operatives in your carefully guarded secret network, but that the operative had become a friend and confident was something that could destroy the entire structure of the Brotherhood. Firmware Proxy is the second book in the Firmware Pentology. That's five books, if you must know. It begins moments after Firmware Hijacked ends. So if you haven't heard or read Firmware Hijacked, this would be a good time to head on over to colbyjack.net and either download the podcast on the audio side, read the episodes on the visual side, or download the Colby Jack Sunday Reader issues 1 through 20 in your choice of either EPUB or Mobi. Firmware Hijacked and Proxy are both available in ebook versions from our store at shop.colbyjack.net, amazon.com, and Barnes and Noble. Just search for Colby Tracks. That's C O L B Y T R A X. I'm the only one. A complete audiobook version of both Firmware Hijacked and Proxy is available for download through our shop as well. If you don't need any stuff, 
but would like to support our work, drop on by ColbyJack.net and hit the pretty little donate button conveniently located on the right-hand side of the blog roll. If you're on a smaller screen, the button will be found at the bottom of the page. Firmware Proxy is released under a Creative Commons, non-commercial, attribution, share-alike, 3.0 license. Do what you want with it, just don't sell it and always tell people where it came from. If you receive this from a friend and want more information about ColbyJack.net and our split personality website, just drop on over to ColbyJack.net and select either the audio or visual side. The audio side carries our podcast, while the visual side carries our writings. Whichever side catches your fancy is fine with us. We're of two minds about the whole thing anyway. If you want to get social with me, I do mostly Twitter. So if you do the tweets and want to follow me, I'm Colby Tracks. Spelled the same as above. C-O-L-B-Y-T-R-A-X. We could sing that all night long. Thank you once again and have a wonderful week.